Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar on strengthening your reporting using the IR framework and the SASB standards. And the purpose of this webinar is to introduce uh, the new parent of IR and SASB, the Value Reporting Foundation. As many of you know, we are merging the two organizations. So we're going to tell you a little bit about that today. Um, there's a lot of interest in uh, the merged organization. We have over 3,000 people registered for our two webinars today. So we wanna thank you very, very much for attending and thank you for your interest in our work. So if we go to the next slide, uh, just a bit of housekeeping. We definitely encourage questions. Please use the chat and um, we will attempt to answer your questions during the webinar and we will also save some time at the end to answer questions. So please put your questions in the chat. On the next slide, I wanna introduce our panelists today. We have a, a terrific, terrific lineup. Um, I'm Janine Gilliatt, I'm CEO of SASB, and I will also be CEO of the Value Reporting Foundation when we merge. Um, Lisa, do you wanna introduce yourself? Hello there, I'm Lisa French, and I'm the IIRC's Chief Technical Officer. And Tamita San? Thank you. I'm Yuki Tamita, I'm ESG Communication Manager at Tokyo Electric Power Company Holdings. Terrific, and Sherry? Hi, I'm Sherry Trevor. I'm the Sustainability Officer at the Washington State Investment Board. Terrific. And what we wanted to do today, and the reason we have um, such a terrific panel, is give you multiple perspectives on uh, integrated reporting and the SASB standards. So if we go to the next slide, what we're going to do first is introduce the Value Reporting Foundation and talk about work that we've done to map the SASB standards and the IR framework and how they can be useful together. And then we're gonna share uh, the business perspective on the SASB standards and the framework and the investor perspective on the SASB standards and the framework. And I think you'll be uh, very, very interested in hearing the TEPCO experience and the Washington State Investment Board experience. So if we go to the next slide, I'll start with the purpose of the IR and SASB merger into the Value Reporting Foundation. Our goals are to simplify the field. Um, we have heard loudly uh, the demand from both companies and investors to simplify the corporate disclosure field. And both IR and SASB have been strongly committed to that. And this merger is a demonstration of our commitment. We also want to globalize both organizations um, with SASB strong in the US and IR strong internationally, especially in Japan. And then we want to focus on reporting as a means to improve decision-making by companies and investors. And so reporting's not an end in and of itself, but is a, it is a means to improving decision-making and a tool to improve decision-making. And then we want to advance the adoption of integrated thinking, integrated reporting, and the SASB standards. And I'll talk about that in a little bit more detail in a minute. And then through all of that, we want to accelerate progress towards a more coherent, um, more understandable and comprehensive corporate reporting system. If we go to the next slide. So what will the Value Reporting Foundation be? And I know we're introducing a new terminology, but think of the Value Reporting Foundation as a parent company. It's one global organization. It will have a unified strategy it will have a single governing board, and it will have three principal products. And those products will remain distinct. And that's the integrated thinking principles, the international IR framework, and the SASB standards. And what I find very exciting about the merger of SASB and IR is that the integrated thinking principles are principles to help 
management and directors think about governance and how they manage their company to deliver value. And the IR framework are tools and the SASB standards are tools to guide external disclosure. And then the SASB standards are, have been heavily integrated into investor decision-making and, and a tool to improve investor decision-making. And so what's terrific about the IR and SASB merger is that under one roof, we now have tools for what I think of as the full cycle from corporate decision-making through external reporting, through investor decision-making, and then the feedback loop back from investors to companies. And so we're really excited about bringing the, those two perspectives together. Uh, we will also, as I mentioned earlier, we're strongly committed to a simplified corporate reporting landscape. So we want to link particularly the IR framework and the SASB standards more tightly together so they feel more coherent from a preparer's perspective. And then we are committed and we're publicly committed to support the IFRS Foundation in its establishment of a sustainability standards board. So then if we go to the next slide, I'm gonna hand over to Lisa now, who's gonna dive a little deeper into the details of how the IR framework and the SASB standards are complementary. So Lisa, over to you. Perfect, thank you very much, Janine. So I, as Janine said, I'm gonna start with a quick comparison between the integrated reporting framework, which is on the left side of the screen, and SASB standards, which are on the right-hand side of the screen. Um, but just a quick reminder or introduction, as the case may be, of the focus of each. So the integrated reporting framework through its fundamental concepts, guiding principles and content elements guides the content and presentation of an integrated report. So discussions about business model, strategy and governance would be among the expected content. And for their part, SASB standards provide industry-specific sustainability topics and metrics that organizations consider and apply in their reporting. So with this top level understanding in mind, let's start our comparison. As shown in the first row, the integrated reporting framework is industry agnostic, meaning that it doesn't focus on any particular industry or sector, but rather speaks to all organizations. By contrast, SASB, with its 77 industry standards, takes a more specialist approach. So for a given industry, a SASB standard would identify a minimal set of financially material sustainability topics to be considered. And unlike the integrated reporting framework, which favors a set of principles over specific topics or metrics, SASB standards go that step further to provide associated metrics. And you'll see these distinctions captured in the second, third, and fourth rows of the table. Now, the final row uh, captures uh, a, another very important contrast. As its name would suggest, integrated reporting is very much about integrating or connecting report content to provide a holistic view of the organization and its ability to create value. SASB standards, on the other hand, have a slightly different emphasis. And that emphasis is on the comparability of information across organizations in the same industry. So there are indeed some differences in our approaches, but we see the union of these two approaches as a huge opportunity. And harnessing this complementarity is a significant strength in our view. Next slide, please. Now we see our merger not as the end game, but rather as a stepping stone to a more comprehensive and connected reporting system. And in this simple house diagram, the larger house with its gray rooftop is that broader system. Now you'll see the contributions of the IRC and SASB through the Value Reporting Foundation in that smaller house with the white rooftop. And as the roof indicates, the integrated reporting framework provides that connection between financial reporting and sustainability reporting. And in the right-hand segment, you see the SASB standards with their industry-specific disclosures supporting robust, credible uh, reporting of sustainability matters to investors. 
So this small house caters primarily to the information needs of investors. But this slide also shows the important role of jurisdictional requirements and other standards, such as those provided by GRI, in addressing a business's wider impacts on the economy, the environment, and society. And so these standards and requirements also contribute to the broader reporting system. Now, we're working with other major players in this space to achieve this overall reporting system. And as a case in point, the Intended Value Reporting Foundation has been appointed to the working group of the IFRS Foundation, where we will actively contribute to a potential um, International Sustainability Reporting Standards Board. Now, before we step away from this house analogy, I just wanna to touch on the overall roof, as well as the house's uh, foundation or base. So, as shown in the large gray rooftop, technology and taxonomy systems will play a critical role in structuring reporting and improving data accessibility and comparability. And looking to the base or foundation of this house, we see this system is based on integrated thinking. And this is supported by management accounting approaches. So there's the mental construct and our contributions through that smaller house. But let's see what that smaller house produces in practical terms. Next slide. So this slide shows key inputs to an integrated report and how they connect to the integrated reporting framework's six capitals. So on the left-hand side, we see financial statements prepared in accordance with IFRS or US GAAP, providing insight into financial capital and to some extent, manufactured capital. So two of the integrated reporting framework's six capitals. And on the right-hand side, SASB standards provide industry-specific disclosure topics and metrics for intellectual, human, social and relationship, and natural capital. So the remaining four capitals in the integrated reporting framework. And of course, as shown at the bottom of this slide, the integrated reporting framework underpins the preparation and presentation of the integrated report. So collectively, these inputs to the integrated report paint the picture of value creation, preservation, or erosion. And this picture enables investors to evaluate enterprise value. And we explore enterprise value on the next slide. So we call this the nested materiality diagram. And in simple terms, it shows that when reporting on sustainability matters, organizations need to consider first, who's using that information? And second, what decisions is that information driving? Okay, so let's start with the outer grayish box. So for policy decisions related to society, the economy and the environment, the scope of sustainability disclosures will be quite broad. Now let's move to the central box where integrated reporting and SASB disclosures both sit. This lens focuses on the decisions of investors who evaluate enterprise value based on their understanding of a given business, and the ways that that business creates, preserves, or erodes value over time. So with this materiality lens, the scope of sustainability disclosures is more narrow and confined to those matters that affect enterprise value. And finally, that pinkish interior box captures an even narrower set of sustainability matters, in particular, those that are easily monetized and captured in the financial statements. So again, the Value Reporting Foundation targets that middle box and its emphasis on informing investor decisions. Now, to inform investor decisions, organizations need to consider a range of factors in their internal and external environments, as shown on the next slide. So for those online who already produce an integrated report, this is a very familiar diagram, but for others, it may be brand new. So just very briefly, this diagram shows the important interaction between an organization's external environment, the gray region, and its internal environment, which we've shown as the white region. And integrated reporting and integrated thinking encourage organizations to consider the capitals on which they rely. These are shown as inputs on the left side of the screen and the capitals that they affect. And that's captured on the right-hand side of the screen. So, if through its business model, an organization has a net positive effect on the six capitals in moving from left to right, then it has created value overall. 
If it has a net negative effect on the capitals and moving from left to right, then value has been eroded. And this multi-capital lens informs the materiality assessment, which in turn informs report content. And of course, this in turn informs investor decisions. Now, before I pass back to Janine, just a few more words on the six capitals. Next slide, please. So we've done a simple mapping exercise between the integrated reporting framework six capitals, shown on the left, and SASB's five sustainability dimensions, shown on the right. And these dimensions effectively capture the universe of sustainability risks and opportunities. So let's start with that dark blue segment marked natural capital, and we're gonna walk our way clockwise through uh, social and relationship capital, human capital, and intellectual capital. And you'll see close counterparts in SASB's sustainability dimensions on the right side of the screen. And although we use slightly different terms from time to time, we see that SASB standards already provide industry-specific disclosure topics and metrics for four of the six capitals covered in the integrated reporting framework. Now I'm actually gonna hand back to Janine so she can walk us through some specific industry examples and offer some commentary on our mapping exercise. So with that, back to you, Janine. Great, thanks. Thanks, Lisa, that was really clear. And, and one thing I would add to what Lisa said is we do know, and we hear this from all of the companies that prepare uh, information that these subtle differences in terminology can be confusing that even if things are similar it would be ideal if there was a way we could make we could fully harmonize these language and concepts and great example of that is the use of the word natural capital vis-a-vis -vis the use of the word environment or the use of the word social and relationship capital vis-a-vis -vis the word social capital can we harmonize these concepts and the definition? And that is one of the things that we are committed to doing over time to make it easier for all of you who prepare reports. But in the meantime, um, as Lisa mentioned, what we've done is a mapping. And that mapping is of the SASB standards to uh, the IR capitals. So if we go to the next slide, just to provide a bit more context about the mapping, um, IR has six capitals, as many of you know. SASB has five sustainability dimensions. And then underneath that, SASB has what we call 26 general sustainability issues. And underneath that, we have 400 industry-specific disclosure topics and related metrics. So what we did is we mapped the industry-specific content in the SASB standards to four of the IR6 capitals. And I'll give you some examples. We're going to walk through three examples of what that looks like for three industries. If we go to the next slide, this is an example for oil and gas exploration and production. And as Lisa mentioned, the SASB standards cover four of IR6 capitals. That's intellectual, social and relationship, human and natural. And what the SASB standards do is they provide more detailed industry specific disclosure topics and metrics that then result in more comparability across companies who are preparing integrated reports. And that comparability then benefits the investor users. So to give you a few examples here, let's talk about social and relationship capital. For oil and gas exploration and production company, community relations is a relevant topic. That is a very significant issue. And as you can see over on the left hand of this slide, We've given you examples of some of the metrics in the SASB standards. And we gave you an example of the community relations metric, which is number and duration of non-technical delays that were due to community relations concerns. So this is a, a, just an example of how the SASB standards can provide more industry specific content for an integrated report. Another example in the human capital dimension, SASB has a disclosure topic 
and a related metric for workforce health and safety in oil and gas exploration and production. So let's look at another industry. And what you'll see, this is the automobile industry. And what you see here is uh, the same four IR capitals, but slightly different SASB disclosure topics because these topics are tailored to the automobile industry. So in intellectual capital, you'll see a topic like fuel economy and use phase emissions, which is how is an automobile maker um, differentiating itself and using its intellectual capital to improve fuel economy and reduce use phase emissions. Another example in human capital would be labor practices. And then you can see the natural capital topics, fuel economy again, but also topics like material sourcing and materials efficiency and recycling, which are uh, very relevant topics in the automobile industry. And then if we go on a next, the next slide, one more industry example, the chemicals industry. So let's talk about, in this case, um, intellectual capital, a topic like packaging life cycle management, which requires um, real intellectual capital around how to minimize the impact of packaging over the entire life cycle of a product. Or a, in human capital, you see a topic like workforce health and safety. Um, so this just gives you some examples of how topics will vary across industry to provide more detail, more com comparability in an integrated report. So if we go to the next slide, what to expect next about the merger of the value of IR and SASB into the Value Reporting Foundation? Some people think we're already merged. We are not. Uh, we are planning to merge, officially merge, the first week of June. And post-merger, what we want to do is provide ongoing guidance on how to use the IR framework and the SASB standards together. We want to work more closely, to more closely align the concepts in the IR framework and SASB standards so they fit together more coherently. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we will continue to support global efforts to create a comprehensive corporate reporting system. So look forward, we're looking forward to continue to communicate to all of you um, as the merger progresses. But with that, that's enough from the Value Reporting Foundation. We very much want you to hear from the perspective of a preparer of um, an integrated report using the SASB standards and then from an investor. So um, we're going to start with the business perspective. And Tamita san, I will turn it over to you. OK. Thank you very much for inviting me to speak at this VRF webinar. I'm Yuki Tomita, an ESG communication manager at Tokyo Electric Power Company Holdings. In this presentation, I would like to tell you how and why TEP is using both the IRRC framework and SASB standards. First of all, let me give you some information about the TEPCO group. TEPCO is the largest electric power company in Japan, operating mainly in Tokyo area. TEPCO has adopted a holding company system and has four companies divided by business segments, namely fuel and power, power grid, electricity retail, and renewable power. Renewable power company was just established in 2020 to meet the growing decarbonization needs of our customers. Regarding our fuel and power, sorry, fuel and thermal power generation business, TEPCO is simply involved in a supervisory capacity. Next slide, please. I will now move on to TEPCO's integrated report. 
We believe that a strong commitment to disclosing ESG information will help to reduce future risks. And it will enhance our corporate value and provide opportunities to increase future financing options. SEPCO has positioned the integrated report as an important information disclosure tool. We began publishing this report in 2017, at which time we based on the report on the IRC framework. Since 2019, the report has also been based on SASB standards. We have identified financial stakeholders as the primary readers of the integrated report. As such, we produce this report while remaining aware of what is of greatest interest to them, such as our financial and non-financial results, future business prospects based on integrated thinking, and our journey towards value creation. Next slide, please. In this slide, I would like to explain why we employ the IIRC framework. SEPCO believes that corporate action based on integrated thinking will enable the realization of, of our purpose. In order to accomplish this, we are leveraging tangible and intangible management resources to the best of ability and engaging in initiatives to improve corporate value and create social value over the long term. In our integrated report, these resources have been organized into the six chapters put forth in the IIRC framework. Next slide, please. Next, I'd like to tell you in detail how TEPCO utilizes the IRC framework. I have been told you our method is quite unique. Topics related to important mid-term management issues have been identified for each chapter and used as detailed examples of a value creation process. Let's use natural capital as an example. Next slide, please. On the natural capital page, you will see information on our overseas hydroelectric projects. TEPCO Renewable Power is aiming for the effective utilization of water resources by leveraging our advanced maintenance management know-how and forming partnerships and other operators. At the Coxon Hydroelectric Power Station in Vietnam, TEPCO Renewable Power personnel are building a strong relationship of trust that transcends culture and not national borders through frequent discussions with personnel on the ground. We aim to increase the value of the power station and expand renewable energies. Next slide, please. I now will move on to SASB standards. There are three main reasons why we have adopted SASB standards. The first is the growing interest from investors. Through over 50 ESG engagements with financial stakeholders, we had already recognized the importance of SASB in 2019. So we wanted to meet their needs. Secondly, we like the idea that SASB 77 industry specific materialities enhance comparability. And these standards have been selected logically, resulting in only the bare necessities. And thirdly, following a detailed global framework like SASB standards allows TEPCO to ensure consistency and transparency. Next slide. 
I will now move on to our information that disclosure for 2020. Based on our engagement with financial stakeholders, we established three main policies. The first is to disclose data for multiple years in order to show our progress clearly. The second is to always include an FAQ. This is due to the increased number of inquiries for them as a result of a move to comply with SASB standards. The third is to make information disclosure based on SASB standards easier to understand. Since SASB enables comparability, we have tried to publish activity metrics that compare TEPCO with global utility companies and disclose accounting metrics that align with TEPCO's value chain. Next slide, please. There are many standards and frameworks in the ESG world and discussions are underway to unify them. It is, however, important to ensure that they can improve accountability, comparability, consistency, and transparency for companies. To this end, it is essential that materiality be narrowed down by industry, and SASB covers this. We believe that engagement with financial stakeholders through SASB will contribute to the enhancement of corporate value. Next slide, please. Both the IRC framework and SASB standards are excellent tools to use when writing an integrated report. TEPCO supports the movement to merge these two tools. The keys that determine if an excellent tool will be widely used or not are its user friendliness to not only corporations but also investors and whether or not the content expressed with the tool takes the form of a common language that transcends linguistic and cultural differences. Our initial goal is to make our engagement with financial stakeholders more fruitful by incorporating an effective disclosure framework, including this IIRC framework and SASB standards into the integrated report. Next slide, please. By proactively actively disclosing ESG information, we hope to convey the appeal of TEPCO and our developing journey towards value creation to all financial stakeholders. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Tamita-san. And I want to congratulate TEPCO. I think TEPCO has put a significant effort into your reporting and, and has some of the most comprehensive reporting available. So congratulations on that. Um, with that, I'd love to bring Sherry up so we can hear a little bit about the investor perspective on the SASB standards and the IR framework. So Sherry, over to you. Thanks, Janine, and thank you so much for inviting me to this important to discuss this important topic today. I don't have the fabulous slides prepared, but I hope that you still are able to find some meaning out of the um, the comments that I'll make today. To start, the Washington State Investment Board manages around $165 billion in investments in 17 retirement plans for public employees, such as teachers, school employees, law enforcement officers, firefighters, and judges. Our pension is a little unique in its high allocation to private markets. Real estate, tangible assets, and private equity comprise nearly half of the pension assets. Outside of our fixed income assets, which are managed in-house, we primarily invest through trusted sub-advisors and partners. We also have a very long-term investment horizon. And as such, it is critical that we are taking financially material sustainability issues into account. 
I was hired as the WSID's first ever sustainability officer in December of 2019. Over my first year in the role, one of my responsibilities was to dig deep into the various sustainability reporting frameworks and standards that exist to help determine which would be of greatest use in our investment process. In doing so, it almost immediately became clear to me that consolidation of these frameworks was necessary for a lot of reasons, including to reduce the reporting burden on companies, as well as to reduce confusion in the industry surrounding what sustainability actually means. However, it was also clear to me why so many different organizations do exist. They each serve unique mm -hmm. purposes which, with different end users in mind. So in the end, we chose to become SASV members because of SASV's focus on financial materiality and its end industry specificity. As fiduciaries, that focus on financial materiality is critical to us. We use SASV's materiality map to help us get a better understanding of how our sub-advisors and partners are considering material ESG risks and opportunities in the companies with which they invest on our behalf. We also selectively engage with public companies on the use of SASB standards in their annual reporting. Last year, I also joined a working group mm -hmm. that is meant to bring forward best practices in using the IIRC's integrated reporting framework in the annual reporting process of asset owners such as ourselves. Just as we believe that improved sustainability reporting by companies will lead to better outcomes for them over the long run, we also believe that implementing best practices and sustainability reporting internally can improve our own outcomes. I have observed with gratitude the efforts of SASB, IRRC, and the other sustainability reporting organizations as they've worked with each other to create a more consistent message to companies and to investors on what sustainability is and what is meaningful to report on. The IIRC and SASB's announcement on their intent to merge and become the Value Reporting Foundation was welcome news to my ears. They have natural alignment in that both were designed to ease the burden of disclosure, not to increase it. But they also fill important gaps for each other as well. SASB standards will tell us what to report and the IIRC discusses how to best report it. The creation of the Value Reporting Foundation is a welcome and necessary step toward continued consolidation of the various sustainability reporting frameworks and standards that exist. No doubt the new organization will be incredibly busy as they work through the details on how they can build on each other. But I want to emphasize that the work won't be done once this merger is complete. We should all continue to advocate for further consolidation where it's possible, as well as for well thought out regulation of sustainability disclosures that are financially material that draw heavily on the existing voluntary standards and frameworks, such as SASB and IIRC. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. That was very eloquent with no slides. That was very impressive <laughs> and very clear. Um, so I'd love to bring Lisa and Tamita San back and um, would just love to ask um, a question about Sherry, about your engagement with companies um, and Tamita San, what you were hearing from investors. Um, when I joined SASB five years ago, uh, we would often hear from companies that investors were not asking about sustainability issues and were not interested. Have you seen a change, Tamita San, in your um, the the interest level of investors in discussing particularly sustainability? I'm sorry, I cannot reply in English for Q session. Please let me use an interpreter. Yes. 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 Yes.
Yeah, for the last couple of years, uh, we are seeing definitely increasing number of questions related to sustainability uh, coming from institu institutional investors. え、uh, so we basically have uh, our engagement, 50% of our engagement are with overseas international investors and the remaining 50% are with the Japanese uh, investors. And the most frequently asked questions would be about the governance related uh, matters and then followed by environment related questions. あ、そういったフレームワークにのっとって回答するということは、あ、機関投資家の皆さんにもこう理解しやすしやすいというか、あのマテリア重要なところなので、え、理解してもらっていると。Thank you. Very, very helpful. And then Sherry, what about you? Because if you go back to your your prior roles um, at Russell, you've you've been in this space for a while. Have you seen what have you seen change in corporate reporting and in the dialogue between companies and investors around uh, sustainability and also long-term value creation and how they are thinking about long-term value creation. Thanks. And this is a this is a challenging question for me because like I said earlier, we're primarily investing through sub-advisors on our public equities front. So um, we're engaging on kind of both fronts. So we are having active discussions during every due diligence meeting with our sub-advisors about how they're integrating ESG into their own investment processes. And then on the public company engagement front, what we do is we primarily utilize trusted industry partners. And I would say SASB and IRC are two of them. Um, but the primary engagement mechanisms are through the Climate Action 100 Plus, CDP, and the Investor Stewardship Group. And all three of those organizations support SASB. And in the public company engagements that we've led as an agency, we have advocated for for the use of SASB standards. So that's our primary, primary mechanism. And I would say that um, the biggest change that we've seen, and it's actually been more, it's been very rapid, but it's been in the last year or so that the, the willingness to report out on SASB and TCFD as well has just, it's grown tremendously. It's no longer, uh, I don't think companies are thinking of it anymore as a, as a nice to have, but they're actually getting getting the message from investors that it's becoming something that they absolutely should be doing. Got it. Okay, well that's very, very helpful. And I'm looking at the chat and there are there are a couple of questions in the chat I think we sh I sh we should briefly address. One, there's a specific question about the fact that SASB announced earlier this year that it would do some work with GRI to more closely align the GRI standards and the SASB standards, and particularly the metrics in the standards. Uh, that is still work we want to do over time. We are committed, still committed to working with GRI on what we call interoperability of the standards, which would mean trying to use common metrics wherever possible so that uh, companies can capture data once and then reuse it for multiple purposes. We are still committed to that, but we've had to defer that work because uh, 
we are focused on the IR merger and also on supporting the IFRS foundation effort, which uh, is moving very rapidly. So I do want everyone listening, I'm sure many of you on the line are GRI reporters, and we still are committed, um, just like we want to make the IR framework and the SASB standards easier to use together, we also want to make it easier to use the GRI and SASB standards over time. Um, the other, I see lots of questions in the chat about regulation and what is going on with the regulators around the world, especially the European Commission, uh, the US SEC is considering action on disclosure, and then the IFRS Foundation, even though the IFRS Foundation is a private entity, uh, the securities regulators oversee the IFRS Foundation. So you can definitely think of the IFRS Foundation effort as also having a regulatory component. And the Japan FSA um, is active in IOSCO, which is uh, the International Association of Securities Regulators overseeing the IFRS Foundation. So that's a long way of saying lots is happening around the globe on regulation. Uh, but regulation tends to be very informed by uh, local legal frameworks. And so what we are trying to accomplish is a global baseline of sustainability disclosure standards focused on enterprise value and focused on the providers of financial capital and linked and connected to financial reporting using the, the integrated reporting framework. And we think if that baseline can be established globally, uh, then that is a building block that regulators around the world can rely on. And in some markets, regu regulators will then add additional requirements onto that building block. In some markets, they may not but we're trying to create this common building block uh, of standards around the world. So just wanted to give a, more, a bit more context on that. Um, Sherry, I don't know if you have any comments or a view on regulation and what you might be looking for in regulation as a large pension fund, or is it too early? <laughs> I, yeah, I'm working on that letter right now. <laughs> um, but I, I have to admit, I, I know I'm, this is a SASB webinar, but the webinar that you had recently about how you would respond to the SEC was incredibly valuable for, for us. And so, so what we're doing right now is we're just going through the process of, like I said, getting the opinions of our industry partners and consolidating those. We'll be writing our own letter that's largely aligned with this idea of um, the, the need for a, like the, the need for some sustainability regulation, the focus at, at least at first on financial materiality and using heavily what already exists as opposed to trying to create anything new. Okay. Tamita san, do you have a view on regulation? I don't so, want to put you on the spot. So no is okay. Uh, we think uh, it's a very difficult issue related to the regulation. ESG に関する項目について、えー、それを書きなさいと。こういう、そういった全体的な大きな流れは、え、え、規制すると。If there is to be any you know, regulation uh, related to or 
uh, will come to include, uh, well, if any type of regulation related to ESG related items, uh, as such an overall trend is something that can be welcome. However, if it comes an official regulation, uh, which is more like a mandatory requirement for the businesses, and that will actually may have some negative impact on our autonomy as uh, the business itself or the, could potentially impair the free expression of those various uh, statements that we would make in the disclosures. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think there is a need for further discussions with various stakeholders uh, to uh, see whether there, you know, uh, to uh, see any emergence of those regulations uh, in details related to ESG. Okay, thank you. That's very helpful. And I do think, uh, you know, that it will be very, very interesting to see how the regulatory environment evolves over the next uh, couple of years because different countries are and different regions are in very different places around regulation right now. Um, I'm conscious of time and um, I don't see any other themes coming through the chat. So I want to hand it to Lisa and see, Lisa, if you have any final comments you want to make and then we can wrap up. Yeah, I would like that very much. Let's make sure I'm not on mute. Um, I really, I think this has been a great opportunity, um, I think, for us to be able to explain the logic behind our intended merger and our plans for the future. So I think that has been time well spent. As a bonus, it has been a great pleasure to, uh, to see TEPCO's integrated report, how the company is increasingly factoring SASB's metrics into its suite of external communications. So Tamita San, I'd like to thank you uh, personally. I would also like to thank your translator. Um, and uh, Sherry, I'm very glad that our intended merger was music to your ears. I've heard uh, similar feedback from a number of people and a number of organizations. Um, that positive reinforcement, I think, just adds to our own excitement about the Value Reporting Foundation. So thank you all around. Yes, and I want to echo Lisa's thanks. Thank you, Tamita San. Thank you, Sherry. Very, very insightful and helpful comments. And thanks to all of you who are listening. We we can't thank you enough for your interest in and your support of our work. And uh, looking forward to more to come uh, through the summer. Definitely, we'll be planning more webinars through the summer. So thank you very much, and everyone enjoy the rest of your day.